Yes. I will take it as yes. All right. Uh, so let's start. So uh, let's start from uh, motivation. Uh, no, let's make a step back. So if you will have any questions, you could just stop me and ask it. So it will be much more convenient and wait end of session. So here we'll have much more context. Yeah, and now we could start. Uh, so I think someone said that uh, technical technical talks could be quite boring. So I have like five, six minutes to make it at least more attractive and I will try to do it. So let's start. Um, important part is motivation. Why I speak about hyperspace? So it's a re relatively small library. It was created, I think, around a year ago. It has 0 0.6 version. They are literally right that don't use it in production. So why we speak about it? It's quite important to understand how such libraries are implemented as far as far, as far as become much more pluggable and extensible. Such things like Delta Lake and hyperspace, it's a good example of how these things can be done. That's why we'll take a look on it from this perspective. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, so let's start from what is hyperspace. So it's quite small Spark library, which give you possibility to uh, to make some uh, to work with extended uh, external indexes and provide some management around it. So it's open source, it's available on GitHub, it's driven by Microsoft. That's why it's, I guess, support.NET from the box. From other languages, it also supports Scala and Python. It's really, so it's zero, uh, zero slides from their official presentation. So I really like it because it describes all different goals which they want to implement, not just like we have index management and that's it. So first of all, they try to be uh, data format agnostic. So no matter what files you have, what format are there, uh, it could be even binary. So uh, in future, they would like to support videos, audios, etc. You could create indexes for it, and there is no uh, no uh, any like specific implementation for specific format. Another thing, they uh, try to use file system for storing indexes. So there is no any other service database to work with it. So it simplify management and also uh, simplify, simplify troubleshooting of any problems which could appear. So the same approach is used, for example, in De Delta Lake. So this project was uh, inspired by De Delta Lake. That's why there are, will be a lot of similarities. Another thing is they want to support in future, not only Spark, but any other engine. So right now they uh, consider to use Synapse uh, SQL from Azure. But it's like long-term plan, so it's quite far from now. Uh, another thing they want to provide some applicability is that you could implement your own uh, metadata or something around these indexes. Uh, still, like it's the thing in plans. Yeah, uh, regarding compliance and security, so right now it's quite uh, simple. So in terms that they uh, collect all lineage of files and also store log of, uh, of all operations. So from one side, technical benefits from it is work with concurrency. So you have some atomic uh, version, which is current one. And if you, some other application try to override this index, so you will need to use optimistic locking. And from other point of view, for audit logs, you have all changes uh, which happen with your index files. Uh, let's speak about what it can do. So right now it supports a small number of cases. So the simplest one is a different kind of filtering. Uh, another one is join optimization. And in the nearest future, they would like to support Bloom filter. Also, they want to make it more extendable that you could add your own uh, rules and, uh, and all, own cases. So right now they implement such, such thing, it's called batch rules. So I'll speak about it more later. From uh, file formats, so right now, as I mentioned, so everything is doing file-based, so you cannot use a database or in-memory data frame to, to use these indexes. So it should be uh, lay on some file storage. They also support data lake, so you could work with different uh, versions of time of data lake and apply indexes to it. Uh, yeah, and nearest future, they are finishing support of iceberg project. From features. 
So uh, the most important one is index management. So you could create index, you could review what right now you are storing there, you could delete it. So such things are quite important. Another uh, quite interesting feature is uh, what to do with mutable data sets. So right now they provide a number of options. So some of them are refreshing. So by uh, full mode, uh, you can understand that it will re uh, recalculate all whole index on whole uh, data set which you provide it. Incremental mode is quite convenient in case where you apply only append and delete, right? So in this case, you are just removing adding files. You don't need to recalculate everything. And quick mode is quite a uh, tricky thing. So also I really dislike that they use quick mode here and also in optimized one. So quick mode doesn't make any refresh uh, immediately. But it collects lineage information regarding what files are created and deleted. And this refresh will be applied on level of uh, execution. So hybrid scan is the same thing, just you don't need to apply a refresh at all. So in this case, when you enable hybrid scan, when you uh, create your query and execute it, so it's in time, uh, in runtime, try to merge files that provide better index for you. Uh, yeah, of course, as you could imagine that if everything's stored in files, it's a question of time when you will have too many files and too many small files. That's why they provide also optimization. In this case, it's basically a compaction. So you could apply full mode compaction and it will compact all your index files in bigger ones. Or you could provide quick mode, which where you provide some threshold and based on this threshold of number of files or size of files, it will apply some partial uh, compaction for you. Let's take a look how it works. So for this purpose, I have uh, set up settling in Docker with Spark. And the, uh, let me know if it's readable. Hope so. Oh, let's assume that it's readable. So right now they support uh, Spark 2. So uh, there is a uh, few PRs regarding to support Spark 3 nearest future. Uh, yeah, and in our example, we will play with a few data sets. So we, we will create a small data set, which is departments. It presents uh, some department ID, department name, and its location. And the same uh, in the same way, we create data set from sequence, we write it somewhere in uh, a file in parquet format. So uh, the same we will create a second data set, it's employees. So employees has some employee ID, they have some name and they have department ID in which these guys are working. So we also create such data set as data frame and we write it to parquet. Now we read this data frames back as I mentioned that it works only with a file based data frames. That's why we do such feed. So, and I show a few small examples of rows which we store in these states. Right, so what we will do next, we will enable hyperspace. So I uh, explicitly add this library with hyperspace to my Zeppelin so I could use it. Uh, we could try to create indexes, but as far as they are created, you will get exception. That's why I will just refresh it. You could also apply delete and vacuum commands to remove index and recreate it if you wish. So on this refresh, uh, yeah, let's speak about this index itself. So straightforward thing. So we have index, which we call uh, that index. It's, uh, uh, so as our index, we want to use the depth ID. And as value, we store a sequence of columns, which will be extracted when you use this index. So in our case, we store only department name. And we do the same for employee table, where we will have uh, employee index. And uh, uh, it will have the same index on department ID, but in this case, we store value into uh, employee name, right? And here we create index. So we uh, have connection between our data frame and our index configuration. So as far as it's already created, so I have just refreshed these guys. So we could take a look on how it works. Uh, I mean, what indexes we have. So there is some metadata information regarding uh, this uh, schema and 
files where we have indexes, we also have states. So some indexes could be in creative mode, some are uh, created. So it's not always provide you latest state. So it could be intermediate step sometimes. So I think they're working to have some listeners to be sure that some indexes already done and then you could apply some your transformation when it's ready. Uh, yeah, so next thing we will enable hyperspace. So the extend Spark to provide this functionality and we'll speak about how it works later. Just we enable it, so it means that we could use our indexes. So we'll take a look on a few examples. So in our case, filtering one, so we have department data frame. We would like to find uh, all departments which has uh, department IDS 20 and take a look on department name. We also will take a look on, uh, so it provides its own explain command for your data frame, which gives you understanding of what indexes were applied, uh, what is execution plan before and after. So uh, we'll take on this part just briefly. Uh, yeah, so we get some results from our uh, filtering. Right, and important part here is, uh, we will take speak about these things more in detail, but we have here, plan with index, plan without it, and also we explicitly see what index was applied. So it's quite good and for troubleshooting thing. Uh, yeah, now we will do join. So we join our two data frames by department ID. We select from one table employee name from another department name, and we also make filtering after it. Uh, I guess if you have ever write SQL or uh, it's even logical that this filter could be applied before. And we will speak about some optimizations which could apply. So there is no need to write it before. Uh, Spark will optimize this thing for you. So we run this theme. Uh, so it makes join, it makes select, it makes filtering, it gets us some results. So we have plan with indexes, without it, and indexes which are used from both sides. Right. Any questions here? All right, uh, so let's speak about how it works. Uh, quite common uh, thing when I'm making interviews and, I spark and asking how Spark works, I get something like it's Spark magic. So it's basically a level on which you know Spark, but today we'll go a bit farther. And uh, yeah, to explain how it works, we have two parts. So first one is this index management, how we create files, what is their structure, and then how we could use these indexes in our queries. So uh, index structure is quite simple. So uh, from one side, we have an uh, index folder where we have uh, our indexes and they are stored in parquet format. From other side, we have log where we have different operations uh, which stored in JSON format. So uh, let's take a look how it looks in real life. So in our case, so we have uh, this index folder. So for each index based to its name, we have separate folder. Uh, so we, in version zero, we have our uh, indexes. So they are stored in parquet format. And here we have log. So in log, we have a JSON file where we have first seen, uh, let's take a look on it. Uh, so we have information regarding which columns we we are using for it, what are our, sch our schema. Uh, we have some metadata information regarding path where it's stored. And also uh, important part is state. So first state is creating. And then we have next one where we have the same thing, but it's state active. So it's store information regarding schema, columns, and also path to uh, which file uh, represent uh, which index. So the same approach is used in Delta Lake, for example, reg uh, regarding what new files we create and what is our current new version. Uh, let's take a look on our uh, parquet files, what we have there inside. All right, so we will take a look on this guy. Yeah, so it has quite simple schema. So it's what we have provided. So we have key department ID, we have value department name, right? And it's technically store uh, uh, projections which we extract from our original data frame. So when we see any benchmarks which shows that index, uh, so hyper enabled hyperspace shows really great results, technically we are not using uh, original data set. We use new ones which has this simplified structure. Uh, it also can store information as any parquet file regarding minimax 
for each column uh, and, and do we have any nodes and such information which can be used for uh, for push down filtering and the same is for any uh, any scan optimization so it's how it looks like uh, let's go back and let's go further let's speak about index usage to speak about it we need to understand how spark works so when you write your sql data set or data frame no matter in which language uh, so it goes through a number of phases so first one is sparse logical plan so we have uh, some uh, some kind of tree of operations which we want to process and uh, parse logical plan is the most simplest way which represents uh, represent this node. On next phase, we have uh, analyzed logical plan. Here, uh, catalog uh, is used for resolving different uh, string literals to find specific columns, uh, to find specific table names, etc. To be sure that we have everything which we have provided. So in most cases, where you make typo in your column name. So quite likely is that you will fail on this phase. Another one is optimized logical plan. So uh, we take our tree of different uh, operations which we want to do, and it goes through, it's traversed by a number of different optimization rules, uh, which can be extended. And based on it, you have a number of different options which you will get as a result. Uh, this way, there is a big number of mappings between a uh, logical plan and physical plan. So right now, uh, optim uh, logical plan present mostly some uh, abstract uh, structure, right? So physical is represent how it will be executed with uh, metadata and statistics information. And exactly this information is used by cost model to choose the best uh, physical plan. As a result, so this plan, uh, so there is catalyst, uh, sorry, not, not catalyst. So all this part is catalyst, uh, but for code generation, there is, uh, I forget its name, uh, tungsten. So tungsten is a uh, code generation uh, tool, let's call it, or part of system which is responsible to generate code back from this plan. Uh, generation of code is needed for a few reasons. So one of it is to use QVM optimization like JIT. So if there are some, functions so it could be inlined using chip and it could speed up things. And another one, we use it to generate results. So in our case, it's a whole stage uh, compilation to be sure that we are not uh, create a big number of small RDDs which need to iterate in each step. So we create big ones. Let's go in details by example. So let's take as an example exactly what we have processed already. So we have employee data frame, we have department data frame. We would like to make join by department ID. We would like to make some projection to select only employee name from one table and department name from another one. And we would like to make filtering by department name and make show as a result to see result. Uh, right. So uh, when you take a look on it from uh, from Spark UI, uh, in most cases, sparse and analyzed logical plans looks the same. If you will apply, explain exactly to source part before show, uh, so you will get a small difference that this literal, uh, this string department name equals research. So it will be kept as string and only on analyzed plan, uh, it will be resolved as uh, this one filter. So how to read the scene? So we go from, yeah, colors matter. I hope there is no problems with this part. If you have, let me know. I will find a way to represent it in a more readable way. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, how to read this scene? So let's. Uh, so the simplest one is from bottom to top. So two relations present our data frames. So you see that there is some uh, schema here. So it's already know that it's party file, even on this step. Uh, then we have this join information. Then we have projection is our select. We have this filtering. And uh, this part, last one, so uh, as far as we want to make show, we need to uh, cast everything to string. So right now uh, on this step, there is no information regarding type of this column. That's why it's explicitly tried to cast everything as string. And also it's apply magical number 21. So it's exactly what you will see in show. So. Local limit means that it will be executed on on uh, executor itself, and global limit means that it will be executed on driver side. Right, so let's continue. 
So optimize logical plan. Uh, I hope it doesn't, yeah, right. Um, yeah, so what we have here. So uh, first of all, let's start from the same from, uh, from bottom one. So uh, right now here we have a relations which goes to our hyperspace. Exactly on this step, we will apply, uh, we will enable hyperspace and exactly this change it will make. Another thing which you could notice is that our filter, so it goes from top to, to bottom. So right now it's applied uh, after this relation pin. And also you see there are additional checks for null for this department name and uh, department ID. Yeah. Next thing is uh, that we have some uh, also something which we haven't written explicitly, but it's right it here that we, we we don't need all columns. We could make some projections from both data sets. Here we still have this join uh, and we have this projection. As you see, so as far as it knows that we will have string results, so it doesn't make uh, casting because it's uh, obsolete here. Also, I need to tell that it's really bad practice to have a lot of text on slides. I hope you know it. So we continue. Uh, sorry. Right. <laughs> uh, right. I hope it doesn't. Yeah. Hope it doesn't suck. Oh, yeah, it's fine. All right. So what we have here. So as far as we'll, we'll map it to physical plan, we will have physical details. Exactly here we have information regarding uh let's go step by step so our relation so here we know exactly what will happen that it's party fo files that we have specific schema that it will use exactly specific files so not all of them but specific ones we also see push down filters uh, which are applied to party files regarding these checks on null uh, the schema should be which should be extracted and the same goes here. So you could see that here in filtering, uh, in the push down filters, we have equal to department name, equal research. So all these things come up to own level when we read party files. So it will be not read everything and then apply it in memory. So it will be done on level where we try to read files. Right, also you could notice here that instead of just join inner, uh, we have specific join which will be used here. So Spark quite clever to choose a specific join operation based on number of rules. You could also right now uh, use hints, which could explicitly say which type of joins should be used. So right now it will be uh, it will use broadcast head join. So idea is that it will take a smaller data set and send it to executor. So in this case, we will not shuffle everything. Uh, so everything will be done in much simpler way. Yeah, this is yellow and, and uh, I'm not purple, not, not purple, violet, violet, uh, is the same. Uh, right, uh, important things is these numbers, right? So you see one here and two here. So it's things which will be used uh, to, uh, to in, uh, as stages in our case. So we will have only two stages. And the same picture you could see when you go to, yeah, here. So when you go to Spark, you see that all these operations are applied as one big stage. So it's one piece of code to to apply all these things, and there will be only one iteration through it. And as I said, so small data set will be uh, collapsed to some kind of hash map and send it to bigger one, where it will apply join and provide results. All right, so let's continue. How about speak about uh, these rules? Right, so Spark provide a way that you could modify each part of this, uh, that you could traverse through each uh, stage of this planning. So you could modify parse logical plan, you could add your specific syntax, for example, it's possible, quite hard, but possible. Another one is optimize, optimize rules, it's exactly what is used in hyperspace. And also you could apply some changes in, phys in physical plan also. Right, so, Right now we'll speak about changes in logical plan. So idea is quite simple that you have some apply function where you get one plan and you need to provide another one. Uh, there is a, a number of different transformation which you could use and idea is that you could modify current node of your tree or you could go to, mod to modification of next one or previous one, for example, which could be quite convenient. 
uh, also it uh, use partial function. I think you could write it only in Scala. It's possible to write it in Java, but it, I don't recommend you. For Python guys, I no. <laughs> Let's just continue. So uh, so here you could provide partial functions. So uh, you could think about it as it uh, kind of if else uh, uh, checks where you could uh, check is it specific subtype current node is it present some specific subtype of your tree. You could also make some extraction of information and even add some additional checks, like it's called cards, where you could verify is it not just filter, but it's filter, which is extracted from a relation where we have uh, only file-based structure, for example. And as far as you will have such rule, you could add it uh, to, in such way uh, to your current session. So it's exactly what is done when we call enable hyperspace. So it's add uh, its own rules to current Spark session. And that's why they are used. More details about how to create such things uh, could be found by Lean. So it's quite interesting uh, article and there's a series of it from, uh, from one cool Polish guy, Bartosz. Uh, yeah, so let's continue. So uh, yeah, as example here, we will take a look on filter rules. So I quite simplified syntax uh, to make it more readable. Still, I wouldn't say that people who have no idea about Scala could get it easily. Here, you have linked to full uh, code. You could take a look on current version. Idea is quite simple, is that we, uh, in our plan, if we will find that we have uh, some filter uh, filter uh, stage or filter node. We would like we extract information regarding what is filter criteria, what columns are used for filtering, and what we want to get in output columns. Uh, based on this information, we will find all indexes. Uh, so it will connect to this index manager and go to indexes and file all indexes which can be used to apply uh, to uh, to apply to this filtering. And based on all this candidate, it will also make one round to find best one. So you could have a number of different indexes, but only one can be the most optimized for resolving specific tasks, right? And next phase as far as we'll have this index specific function, which will modify this part of plan and replace uh, parquet files, original ones with indexes itself. So it's how it works. Uh, I think that's it from my side. Questions? 